I'm here with Ryan Park. He is with an organization called Upbring. Upbring is one of our startup and nonprofit members at the Texas Blockchain Council. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Amy, what's up? I'm doing awesome. I'm better now that I'm here. We're just talking about how this is going to be the best podcast ever before hitting the record button. So <laughs> hope people are excited. Absolutely. Ryan, give us a little background on yourself. What do you do? What are, what's your passion and what got you into crypto? Sure. Um, so uh, I am the VP of innovation at Upbring. Um, uh, I got into working at Upbring. Actually, this is my first nonprofit that I've, I've worked at. I've been at Upbring for almost five years. Um, but prior to that, um, I was more in the entrepreneurial space, um, go, dating back 15 years ago, 16 years ago, started my own company out of college, uh, rolled that into a full service creative and digital agency, did that um, and worked in that space for about 12 to 13 years. Um, then just started looking around um, to find a way that I can make impact beyond just creating um, you know, media and, and chasing money for money's sake, if you will. Um, and so then I came across Upbring um, and Upbring. Um, Ryan, can you tell us about the organization Upbring? What's your mission? Yeah, absolutely. So Upbring's mission is near and dear to my heart. Um, our mission um, as a nonprofit is to break the cycle of child abuse uh, by empowering children, uh, families, and communities. Um, we are headquartered in Austin, Texas, the great Austin, Texas, hook them. Um, but the organization serves the entire state um, of Texas, virtually every nook and cranny. Um, and as a nonprofit, we, we believe that child abuse insults our humanity um, and that to break the cycle of child abuse and redefine child well-being, there's a lot of work to do, um, a lot of work to do. And that's where the Innovation Lab comes in. Um, so that's uh, a little bit about Upbring and then just briefly our Innovation Lab. Um, so the Innovation Lab is uh, a subsidiary or department, whatever you'd like to call it, of uh, Upbring. Um, and our goal um, is to unite the brightest minds with the boldest ideas in and around Texas, not just in child welfare or the nonprofit space, but in the Web3 space, in the entrepreneurial space, big data um, universities were working with many partners um, to turn ideas into real outcomes um, that will ultimately break the cycle of child abuse. Perfect. And we are going to be down in Austin, November 17th and 18th, our summit. I hope that we'll get to see you and the Upbring team oh, um, yeah. on those days. Oh, we're super excited for the summit. It's going to be a good time. We'll be there. Did you get into the blockchain space? Did you get into cryptocurrency? Kind of what was your avenue into this whole domain? Yeah, I mean, um, working, at, working at a creative agency, you know, a decade plus back, I had heard rumblings of Bitcoin, uh, you know, from our developers, um, learned a little bit about it, um, you know, on a personal side, made a little investment there. I always, was always crypto curious, if you will, always kept my finger on the pulse. Um, but as it relates to work we do at Upring, um, found the, that the technology behind crypto blockchain was very interesting, just had no idea how it might apply. Um, so just started getting active um, in the communities, um, in the Texas community. We joined the Texas Blockchain uh, Council uh, for um, the purpose of just understanding what's going on. So um, like many, just curious, um, started dabbling around and, and here we are. Perfect. And you said you are the VP of Innovation at Upbring. Tell us a little bit more about that role, please. Sure. Um, so as the VP of Innovation, my job is to oversee our Innovation Lab. Our Innovation Lab is a department of Upbring, our nonprofit. Um, and what we do is uh, we surface ideas from across um, those we serve, as well as our staff. So we have 1,200 employees at Upbring, um, and many of them have great ideas. Um, so as the VP of innovation, we feel those ideal ideas, see if they can become business ideas or ideas that have social impact as a nonprofit, um, and then run with it and start experimenting to see, hey, can we turn these ideas um, into um, actual business lines, into areas of impact for organization? 
So tell me, Ryan, how how are you all at Upbring using blockchain technology? Sure. Um, so may, maybe it's helpful to take a, a slight step back to understand what it is that up, that Upbring does, and then and then the blockchain alignment there. So um, Upbring is a direct action um, Texas wide organization um, dedicated to providing families um, with the resources that they need, education and support that they need. Um, to bring up children with faith, love, joy, and hope. Um, so what that means from a programmatic standpoint is we provide everything from foster care services to uh, Head Start and early Head Start programs, uh, abuse uh, intervention, prevention, treatment centers, work at the border, um, quite a lot of programs. We pretty much touch every part of Texas with the mission to break the cycle of child abuse. Um, and so um, how our innovation lab works and how blockchain comes into the picture is um, the child welfare, child well-being space, in Texas, but frankly, across the United States, it's typically closely tied to the government. It takes a little bit longer um, for innovation to come around, for new technologies to be introduced, um, given the nature of the work. And our innovation lab seeks to kind of expedite that um, to look at new technologies and see, are they applicable? Um, can they help ultimately break the cycle of child abuse and help children and families in our community? Um, and so uh, naturally, um, as an innovation lab, um, one of the things that's always floating around probably every innovation lab right now is blockchain technology. Um, but we wanted to see if it's actually applicable um, in terms of actually helping children out. And we found it is. Um, yeah. I can imagine because of the nature of blockchain, you can store a lot of information about the, the kids and maybe foster families. Can you tell us a little more about what information is getting transmitted over the blockchain and how is it sure. speeding things up? Sure. So, um, you know, the work that we do, I mentioned that our mission is to break the cycle of child abuse. Um, and, and when you look at how we do that, it's largely in foster care. Um, and, and adoption. And um, sometimes it's hard to take the heart out of what we do, but if you do for a moment um, and, and look at the system, you'll recognize really it's a logistic system. Um, it's a logistic system with a lot of data, a lot of players, a lot of information and, and sensitive material as well. Um, so uh, we're currently actually working um, on one project. It's a little under the wraps right now, but I can talk a little bit about it. Um, where we are taking uh, dummy data right now, we don't um, uh, proof of concept, taking dummy data, child data, um, to see how um, certain processes um, in foster care may live on a blockchain in terms of um, sharing data, um, permission, access to specific uh, pieces of data that may expedite um, the service to the child. And, and what I be, mean by service to the child is in foster care, there are there are many people um, working with children, whether it's a family case worker, um, whether it's mental health providers, whether it's uh, a group like Upbring, who is a, a private agency or the state, um, all needing access to different pieces of data. Um, and in many times, if the tech's not there, um, or even if, if it is there, um, there are bottlenecks. So um, we're looking at how um, we can um, create a essentially an application to address this. Um, and we've done so um, with our first proof of concept application. Incredible. Incredible. Well, I've been seeing you guys in the news, a big announcement with the giving block. Will you tell us more about yeah. that, please? Uh, uh, we, well, first of all, we love, we love the giving block. If you haven't heard about the giving block, um, the giving block um, is a company specifically that helps nonprofits accept um, cryptocurrency as donations. Um, so I believe they're up to about 1,500 to 2,000 nonprofits um, that can now accept cryptocurrency because of the giving block. Upbring is one of them. Um, we wanted to take it a step further, though, um, and go beyond just being able to accept cryptocurrency. Uh, we wanted to look at how can cryptocurrency um, help us create systemic change and create a long-term funding vehicle um, for our innovation lab. So last week, um, we announced the launch of our crypto endowment for better childhoods. 
um, where we are accepting uh, quite a large range of uh, cryptocurrencies um, into an endowment fund that um, we will be holding. So uh, unlike um, many nonprofits who will accept crypto and then immediately convert that to fiat um, and, then, and then use that for direct care services, um, we've created an endowment fund where we're actually going to be accepting cryptocurrency into a portfolio and holding um, that portfolio um, and growing with the market. Um, and then when that money receive, uh, hits a certain level, we're going to um, begin doing draws from it to support the innovation lab in these projects that are, are looking to uh, break the cycle of child abuse, abuse through technology. Incredible. And are y'all the first ones to be doing the process that you said about holding on to it and not converting it immediately? I haven't heard any other organizations doing that. Yeah, um, I, I, I will say I always like to be careful with my words because you just never know what's out there. It's a big world. But um, we are the first um, nonprofit that is creating endowment specifically where we hold the funds um, that's fully funding innovation and child well-being. So as we are very passionate about helping those in Texas and those we serve. Um, but what's exciting about this endowment is that it's funding innovation for all child well-being. So the work that we do can be shared on a national level. Um, and what's exciting about the endowment fund too, it's entirely crypto enabled. Um, so that can that means two things. One, we are accepting donations. Um, would love um, your community support um, in, in uh, making donations to our endowment fund. But we're also looking for partnerships um, with uh, both protocols, marketplaces, um, and even NFT artists. Um, we've established a handful of those already and, and plan to expand those efforts so that we're actually building ourselves into the Web3 ecosystem um, instead of solely relying on donations. I see. Now tell us, you spoke about donations. Where would one go to make a donation to the endowment fund? Yeah, so if it, if it is the end of September or the month of October when you're watching this, uh, 2022, um, you can simply just go to upbring.org. Um, at the very top of the page, there will be a link um, to the crypto endowment fund. If it's after that time, you still go to upbring.org, just add a forward slash give dash crypto. Um, again, that's upbring.org forward slash give dash crypto. Um, and you, you'll have access to either donate directly to Upbring's direct care programs or um, to our crypto endowment fund, which we're talking about today. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. So how has when you guys are fully functioning and able to accept crypto donations, how do you see that affecting how, are these new and different donors that are that are giving crypto? Yeah, it is. Um, so, you know, our our donor base, like like many nonprofits, tends to skew a little a little bit on the older side. Um, but also, also frankly, um, the crypto <laughs> tends to skew on the younger side, right? Um, so we're, we're seeing a lot more technologists wanting to get involved, and frankly, I think people have wanted to get involved with nonprofits for a long time, um, but people are less familiar with how to do so. They're familiar with volunteering, but um, when you go beyond the direct impact that you make, you know, one-to-one, -one, um, how can you actually make change on a systemic level as somebody who partners or volunteers with a nonprofit? Um, and we're seeing that get, getting involved in the Web3 world, launching a crypto endowment fund um, for better childhoods, um, these provide new opportunity for technologists that that want to partner on a deeper level um, and make uh, more broad scale uh, change uh, through our innovation lab. So neat. And Ryan, what, what's really striking with me is that you guys built this to be so scalable, not only mm -hmm. from Texas out to the federal level, but also from Internet Now to Web3. You guys have so much room for growth and potential, and it just is incredible that you had the vision and your team had the vision to build it in that way. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're, we're definitely um, still learning. I, I joke around to say if anyone says they're an expert in the crypto space, especially if they say that they're an expert in the crypto philanthropy space, they're probably lying if you define it by Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours, right? Um, it's still a really new space. Um, 
you know, 10, 10, 10 to 12, 10 to 15 years is still really new relative um, to how long um, nonprofits have been around. So we're exploring, we're learning, um, and we're looking to learn with other people. So if there are partners out there, you know, we've had the opportunity um, already um, to work with um, some great people um, through the Texas Blockchain Council, um, ORE System being one of them, um, uh, Marathon Digital um, being one that's worked with us, and a handful of NFT artists as well. Um, but we're learning with each step, and um, really the scalability comes from open conversation, learning what is actually going to be scalable and what we should pull back on. Excellent. Well, Ryan, where can we find more information about Upbring, more information about the endowment? You have websites we could go to? Oh, yeah. Upbring.org. Um, just visit that website. That's where you'll find more information. Um, or, um, you know, we're pretty active. I know the Web3 community is as well. We're pretty active on Twitter. Um, you can find us at uh, twitter.com forward slash upbring org that's upbring org um, i'm also available at big ryan park um, and would love to chat with anyone about web3 well ryan thank you so much for your time today we appreciate you telling us about these amazing projects happening thank you so much we're really grateful for the support of the texas blockchain council and also that your community is amazing we're so so grateful for the community and, and their support thus far. Um, we've been able to, to, to raise close to $50,000 in our first week of launching the fund. Um, and um, that currently is actually all match grant money. So that means anybody watching that makes a donation um, will have their donation double um, through that match grant money. And that's all thanks to your community um, our community and um, the, the great state of Texas. Wow. Well, thank you again, Ryan. And I can't wait to see how much donations will roll in and best of luck in the endeavor. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Bye, Ryan. Hey, y'all. Lee Bratcher here with the Texas Blockchain Council. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help other people find us. If you like this content, check out the Texas Blockchain Council YouTube channel as well as following us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter.